most interesting heroes to spring from our country's folklore is a man by the name of Jonathan Chapman, better known as Johnny Appleseed. Now, some say Johnny was a saint. Others say he was nothing but an apple-headed loony bird. But all agree he left a living legacy of apple orchards across America's heartland nearly 200 years ago. Orchards just like this one. She is. All 40 acres. Tell the truth, I hate to sell, but times are tough. This ain't exactly the golden age of farming. <laughs> now, what was it you wanted to put up here? A hundred condos. Gee, I don't know. Seems like a shame to waste something so dang beautiful. Well, they're apple trees. See, this is an apple. And it grows on trees. It doesn't grow in plastic bags in a supermarket, as you might think. Yes, it is. Pretty amazing. Yep, this old orchard has quite a history. It was planted by Mr. Johnny Appleseed himself. What? You never heard of Johnny Appleseed? Where is it you say you come from? Venus? You better sit right down here, and I'm going to tell you the story of old Johnny. Because if you're going to dig up all these trees and put in a bunch of jacuzzis, you ought to know the history of the place. No, I ain't got a pillar for your rear end. Just sit on the ground. Now, the day Johnny Chapman was born, it was raining cats and dogs. But the second he came into this world, the rain just stopped. And a beautiful rainbow arched across the sky and ran smack into an apple tree right outside of the bedroom window. And I guess maybe that was a sign of things to come. Because from that day on, little Johnny was just crazy about apples. He'd only drink apple juice from his baby bottle. And he wouldn't even go to sleep, lest he was lying under an apple tree. And Johnny took on a few more peculiar habits, like refusing to sleep or eat indoors. Don't encourage him, Martha. The kids in town thought Johnny had a loose marble, so his only friends were the animals. And while other kids had lemonade stands, Johnny was operating a roadside pet hospital. I wouldn't worry, though. It's just a little heartburn. Nah, no charge. Next. When Johnny got to be about 18, he decided to set out to seek his fame and fortune. Son, I've packed you some apple cookies, a little strudel, and some dried apple slices for you to nibble on. Thanks, Mom. I forgot all about food. <laughs> You're throwing away your future. I know, Dad. A bum. Is that what you want to do with your life? Be a bum? Dad, I, I just need to find a place where I fit in. Why can't you fit in at Harvard? Pull some strings, get you an interview? Uh, no, 
You want to go traipsing around looking for... What are you looking for, anyway? Well, I... I guess I'm just looking for me. I'll save you a trip. You're right here, in your front yard. Oh, Warren, it's just a phase. He'll grow out of it. Into what? Full-grown nut? Bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. Get out of here, you apple-headed loony bird. Bye, Dad. But before Johnny hit the road, he stopped by the general store to load up on traveling supplies. Hello, Mr. Goodwin. Johnny, congratulations on Harvard. Oh, no, I'm not going to Harvard. Instead, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to walk around the country and look at the trees and talk to the animals and maybe figure out my purpose in this funny old world. Your dad must be thrilled. But first, I'm going to need some traveling clothes. Fine. I have shirts, shoes, trousers. Hey, this looks good. That's a sack of potatoes, Johnny. Yeah, oh. I know, but, but look, Mr. Goodwin, if, if we cut a hole in the sack for the head and a couple more holes for the arms, this could be great. You want to wear a burlap sack? Sure. Well, I'll need a hat and a pot for cooking. <laughs> Here's a pot. Wait a uh, second. Wait, man, Mr. Good. Wait a second. This, this is a great idea. This could be a pot and a hat. How's it look? Frankly, Johnny, it looks stupid. But very functional, though, because it saves me the trouble of carrying around a pot. Forget the hat. I'm wearing the pot. Fine. Uh, anything else? Uh, boots, a canteen, blanket, uh, pot holders? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I think the pot and the sack will do it. Do you mind if I pay you with... Apple seeds? Oh, no need, Johnny. It's on me. Oh, thank you, Mr. Google. Well, I'm off. Yes, he's off, all right. Well, here I am cooking dinner. And then I'll eat it. And then I'll maybe have some dessert. Maybe another apple. And then I'll go to sleep. And tomorrow I'll start walking some more. Of course, I, I walked a lot today, but I only got as far as here. Maybe what I need is, is some kind of reason for being out here. I tell you, Johnny, starting a hurricane is murder on the hair. Who are you? <clears throat> Betty. Betty Nature. You probably know me as Mother. Your Mother Nature? Johnny, I see you out here in my territory wandering about, and as far as I can tell, you're just taking up space. Yeah, I know. I was just thinking about that. Look, Johnny, let me come right to the point. I got a job for you. You like apples, right? I sure do. Me too. And at the moment, I have a shortage of apple trees. So what I want you to do is go to the cider mills and pick up as many apple seeds as you can carry. Then, I want you to travel around the country and plant apple orchards. Really? What a great job. Why did I think of that? I'm going to start right the second. Uh, Johnny, this is a dream. Wait until you wake up. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and one more thing. You're no longer Johnny Chapman. From now on, you will be Johnny Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed. That's nice. I, I, I like the way it kind of 
rolls off the tongue. <laughs> Thank you, Mother Nature. Betty. <sighs> now go on out and make me proud. Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> And so Johnny now had his mission in life. And he started planting apples all over the country like there was no tomorrow. He traveled like the wind, planting here, planting there, stopping only to take a quick snooze or heal a sick animal. Johnny even devised his own original method of planting, something he called the apple seed heel and toe hop. Naturally, all this traveling and hopping occasionally brought him smack dab into the middle of a settlement. Gentlemen, I'm not pleased with the quality of furs that you're bringing to me. Well, Mr. Smith, we're doing the best we know how to. Yeah. Jed, did I give you permission to speak? I don't think so. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Unless I see a dramatic improvement, and I mean soon, I will be forced to cut off all your credit at my trading post, which means that you and your homely wives and disgusting little children will starve. But that would break my heart. Gentlemen, all I'm asking for is a couple thousand hides of beaver, fox, and mink. Is that so difficult? There ain't no mink in these parts. I know. That's why they're so valuable. Now get trapping! Move it! Pardon me, friends. Could you direct me to the local trading post? We ate your friends. Fine. I can live with that. You see, I'm in need of some farming supplies. We don't do no farming around here. Mr. Smith says that's sissy work. We're hunters and trappers. We live off the meat of the land. Anybody home? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, thank you for your help, gentlemen. <clears throat> One strange potato, Joe. Cuckoo Butch. Felt like that. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to creep. Oh no, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I overreacted. I, I'm just not that used to people. Is that a pan on your head? Oh no, no, no. Actually, it's a pot. I know it looks sort of funny, but I'm just. It's actually very practical. I like your burlap shirt. I mean, pants. Outfit. <laughs> I like it. Wow, this is something I threw together. <laughs> oh, I'm Jenny Smith. I work here. My uncle owns this trading post. Oh, Johnny Appleseed. I like to plant. Gee, I never met a man who planted. <laughs> I'm looking for mulch. Oh, I'm sorry. Mulch died about six months ago. No, I, I mean, like, manure. <laughs> May I help you? Oh, hi, Uncle Jack. Jenny, I don't recall giving you permission to talk with strangers. Well, this is Johnny Appleseed, my Uncle Jack. Well, I'm going to go look for some manure. Pardon me if I don't shake your hand, but I want you out of my trading post. Any particular reason? Yes. You're ugly, you're dirty, and you smell like bad meat. I don't want my niece contaminated by you. Any further questions? 
Yes, do you carry any of those little short shovels? Out. With the little handles? Out. And the deep face? The... Oh! Oh! That's the way out of town, if you don't mind. The Indians will take care of him. <laughs> Hmm, <laughs> Hello. I assume you're the chief? Mm-hmm. Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed. At your service, sir. You're not from Smithville, are you? No, no, I'm not. Good, good. See, I'm convinced that Smithville is the breeding ground for all stupid white men. <laughs> Maybe it's their diet. What's that on your head? Oh, it's, it's uh, a hat. Well, it's a pot. A pot hat. A pot and a hat. I like it. Oh, thank you. Well, it, it's, it's, it comes in handy. Yeah. I mean, can you cook in that? <laughs> no, it's very impractical to cook in feathers. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, corn, good. I hate corn. It's all we ever eat. Cream of corn, corn on the cob, corn pancakes. Oh, have you ever had one of these? What is this? It's it's called an apple. 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 I can hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Why are you talking like that? I don't know. Mmm. <laughs> That's what I call food. Yeah, isn't it good? Crunchy, mm -hmm. tasty, and sweet. Oh, I can have one too. <laughs> oh, you got more in there. Yeah, huh? got a uh -huh. bag. <laughs> and so, after teaching the chief and his people how to plant and care for apples, Johnny finally got around to saying his goodbyes. Thanks for everything, Johnny. And that cobbler was out of this world. Oh, you like it? I'm glad. Uh, did I tell you I liked your pot? Only about five times. Oh, oh look, I, I just happen to have a spare one. Would you like to try it on? <laughs> uh, it's you, Chief. <laughs> and here's a gift for you. This pouch contains magical healing herbs. Oh, thank you. <sighs> Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Bye. Anything? I'm sorry, honey. I'm, I'm just not a very good trapper. How's little Mac? He's worse. I don't know what else to do for him. Once. Just once. I wish a little luck would come my way. 
This is not what I had in mind. Morning, neighbor. Name's Johnny Appleseed. Name fits. You look like a fruit. Actually, uh, I don't. Uh, uh, a fruit is, is much smaller, and they rarely talk. <laughs> Friend, I'm here to change your life. Johnny's the name, and apples are my game. And I'm here to offer you the opportunity of a lifetime. All I ask is you allow me to plant an apple orchard in your land. I'll provide the seeds, labor, and the knowledge. Then, with a minimum of effort on your part, you'll become a prosperous man. Uh -huh. What do you get out of it? Oh, the simple joy of seeing those sad hound dog eyes of yours twinkle with delight. <laughs> so, what do you think? I think your pot's on too tight. Well, the night's getting worse. I wish I knew what to do, Edna. Maybe I can help. Here, Johnny. I brewed those herbs just like you said. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. If my boy dies, I'll wrap that pot around your head. Did I mention I don't like you? The fever's broke. It worked. Oh, Johnny, <laughs> I love you. Could you love me a little bit less? Mac, I got fragile ribs. <laughs> We'd be mighty honored if you spent the night, Mr. Appleseed. I'd appreciate that, man. <laughs> yes, I, I can see the point. I, if I were there, I'd do the same thing. Johnny, you know, you can sleep in the cabin if you want. Oh, that's OK, Mac. I, 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 I prefer the outdoors. Who are you talking to out here? Oh, I, I, I was. I was just chatting with your dog. He was telling me that most of the animals are, are leaving the area. Apparently, they are tired of, of being killed by all the trappers. Johnny, you don't really talk to the animals, do you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, you, you, you can't talk to each animal the same way. You have to talk to each one individually. You know, for example, uh, uh, a dog is, is very smart, so you can talk almost normally to them. But uh, squirrels or raccoons, you talk very slowly, so they won't get confused. And birds. <laughs> don't, get, don't get me started on birds. Ah, uh, Johnny, I just wanted to say that um, if you'd like to plant some apple trees on my land, it's all right with me. Oh, thank you, Mac. That's, that's wonderful. I'll get started in the morning. But I got to warn you that Mr. Smith ain't going to like it. Of course, he doesn't like me much anyway. <laughs> See, I don't do things Smith's way, so I'm sort of an outcast. And we're just barely scraping by here. <laughs> and believe me, Smith is not going to pay me money for a load of apple hides. <laughs> Peels. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> well, good night to you. Good night. Thanks again, John. Oh, thank you. But anyway, um, can you talk to them, or is it... Do you know where they're going? <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I, I really like the guy. But I truly think he might be from a different planet. Did you two take care of that matter as I requested? Oh, <laughs> boss, we fixed his wagon good. Good, good. Boss. And you made sure his apples won't grow? I mean, it's not that I don't trust you, it's just that I don't trust you. How did you do it? We spread manure all over his field. Everywhere. <laughs> Those seeds don't have a chance. Oh, dear. You two bring new meaning to the word moron. Would you kindly hand me that club over there? Why, 
Ay, ay, Laura. <laughs> I still can't believe it. It just grew right out of the ground. And it's really going to be a tree? With your help, Mac. Oh, you bet. I'm not going to let my little babies die. Well, then, here's what you have to do. You have to make sure... Johnny taught Mac how to care for the newly planted orchard and once again hit the road, planting more orchards and, of course, talking with various animals. Sure, he might have lost a couple of times, but he finally made his way back to Smithville, stopping first to check in on the McIntosh family. You did a great job, Mac. These are beautiful. Well, I had a good teacher. <laughs> You know, there's a guy back east who'll buy every bushel I can send him. Really? Yeah, yeah. Boy, it sounds like you're doing real good. Yeah, but uh, I'm the only one. You were right about all the animals leaving. The rest of the folks are nearly starving. And Smith ain't no help. Well, Mac, remember, one bad apple does not spoil the whole barrel. Yeah. Well, it looks like you had some luck today, Jen. Oh, uh, yeah, well, I uh, came up with these. Um, what are they? Mice furs. <laughs> mice furs. Imagine the goal of this guy coming in with mice furs. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Jenny. Well, what do you have, Zeke? Gophers and hamsters. you so much. You left without even saying goodbye. Oh, I, I said goodbye. You just didn't hear me. I was two miles away when I said it. I forgive you. You look more beautiful than ever, Jenny. Oh, I bet you say that to all the girls. I, I, I don't know any other girls. Do you miss me? Miss you? Oh, sh sure. Well, I, I guess I missed you. At least you know how to flatter a girl. <laughs> You're not like any other person I've ever met. Johnny, old pal! Heard you were back in town. Old pal? And you're looking very healthy. New pot? I love it. Looks very smart. Precious, could you excuse us for just a teeny tiny little moment? Thank you, dear. Listen, you stinking bag of rotten fruit. You stay away from my niece and you get out of my town. If you're still here in 30 seconds, I'm going to play William Tell with your head. <coughs> a pleasure to see you again, Jack. I, I'd, I'd love to stay, but I, I do have to run. <coughs> anyway, that's to the family. Hi, fellas. What can I do for you? We was wondering if you could teach us some of this farming and planting stuff. Yeah, because there ain't no more furs, and uh, Mr. Smith, he's squeezing us dry. And after we seen what you done for Macintosh, yeah. we says to ourselves, this is a life for us. Oh, you big galoots. <laughs> <laughs> well, this this is what you have to do. You have to get some seeds. And so Johnny began teaching the men all about farming, starting with his own unique planting method. He taught them how to care for the young seedling, how to feed them, and how to make them strong. And then he taught them how to grow other things besides apples, so that they could learn to be totally self-sufficient. After that, Johnny taught the settlers the basics of animal husbandry. And that, students, is the story of the egg. I see our time is up. So tonight's homework is to write a report on the difference between a cow and a bull. <laughs> That's enough out of you, Jeremiah. <laughs> Gosh, an apple for the teacher. What an original gift. Johnny, I'm so proud of you. Thanks to you, the whole settlement is filled with hope. 
Um, I'm nothing but a simple guy in a burlap bag. I think you're wonderful. Gee, I guess there are some advantages to being nothing but a simple guy in a burlap bag. Gentlemen, I am deeply troubled by the recent turn of events. As you well know, I have always held the reins of power in our humble settlement. I guess you could say that I've been like a father to the people. In fact, I've been more like a god. Amen. Amen. But things have changed. As we speak, Mr. Appleseed is teaching my people to be self-sufficient. And they're liking it. How dare he think that he can help my people? You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to take that skinny little pothead by the Ugh. throat. And choke him till he's gasping for air. Then I'd like to take his nose and twist it off his face. Then I'd like to take his ears and shake his head back and forth, back and forth, till I rattle every single seed out of his head. <coughs> now, I'd like some feedback on my proposal. But before Smith could make good on his threats, the rain suddenly stopped, and the entire area was plunged into a terrible drought, and the newly planted crops started to wither and die. You call this corn? <laughs> I call this dead. May I ask what it is you're doing? Oh, you certainly may. I I'm getting water for the crops. No, you're not. Y yes, I'm, I'm positive that's what I'm doing. You see, there's a drought going on. No, no, no. This is my well, therefore it is my water. Oh, well, in that case, it's very generous of you to share some of the water with us because we... Oh, boy, that's refreshing. I'll be a, a bit wasteful. <laughs> Boys, he's getting on my nerves. <laughs> I, I, I've never really liked guns, especially when they're pointing at me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You'll excuse me. <clears throat> Hi, Johnny. Hi, Betty. Don't tell me I fell asleep. Don't worry, Johnny, you're awake. You see, variety is the spice of Mother Nature. Sometimes I appear in a dream, sometimes I appear in the real world, and most of the time I don't even appear. Well, I don't mean to be rude, Betty, but I'm in a big hurry. Johnny. Yes? What are you doing? Well, I'm running to the river to get water for the orchards. The river is 50 miles away. I know, that's why I'm in a big hurry. Oh, Johnny, sweetheart, I love you. And you're doing a terrific job with your apples, but you're like, you're like a snowstorm on the North Pole. A lot of activity, but no effect. Well, what else can I do? The, the river's the only source of water left. That is, unless you'd like to put an end to the silly drought. Mother Nature can't be that convenient. Besides, I can't save your hide every time you get into a jam. It's not natural. Oh, and you think letting the crops die and, and watching people die is natural? Because if you do... Don't argue with Mother Nature. Use your head. There's always a solution to a problem. What can I do? Why should I care? I mean, it's... It's their town, so it's their problem, right? I'm just passing through. A vagabond. A drifter with dirt path fever. That's why... I, I'm just going to vamoose. Hit the road. Make like the wind and blow. Uh, I can't do that. I can't desert them. Wait a second. This is good. This is intelligent. Here I am sitting with a beaver, and you're the one who can help. 
Cause, cause, like, you're the head beaver, right? And you make dams. Right, and, and so, for you, it's not so much like work, but a way of life, right? Right, so, 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 considering that, how would you feel about making some dams? You will? Oh, that is great. Thank you so much, Bert. You are one great beaver. You really are. Oh, and, and tell the other beavers they're great, too. Oh, this is so exciting. I think I have to dance for joy. <laughs> oh. Oh. This will plant apple seeds six feet under. Why did you do that for, boss? You'll find out soon enough. <laughs> well, why bother? There's no water. Why don't we just let my crops die in peace? Just don't worry. I, I've taken care of the water situation. You get a new horse? No, that, this is Larry's horse. How do you know? It's his brand. Oh. Well, come on, boy. I'm taking you back to Larry. I bet he's sick with worry. Oh. You're not the smartest horse in the world, but I I'm sure that Larry would be glad I brought him in. Johnny, you're so thoughtful. Uh, Larry, is this your horse? Yep, that's my brand, Larry. And why is it that Mr. Appleseed now has your horse? I don't know. He stole it. I see. Mr. Appleseed, you are now under arrest for horse stealing. Uncle Jim, you I'm stay not... out of this. When I get through with you, you won't have a pot to put on. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Folks. <laughs> Folks. It is my unfortunate duty to inform you that our beloved Johnny Appleseed is nothing more than a common horse thief. What? Horse thief. No. I know, I know, I know it's hard to believe, but I have a very reliable eyewitness. Larry? What? Oh, that's right. He stole my horse. This is absurd. I didn't... I don't think that these people are interested in listening to a horse thief. Friends, I don't like to be the one to say I told you so, but I told you so. The day that this dirty, smelly creature staggered into our town, mumbling to himself, I told you he was bad news. And when he started filling your heads with his crazy notions of farming and growing things, I told you to ignore him. He promised you rich rewards, and you morons believed him. Now, thanks to him, your crops are wilting and your orchards are drying. You see? This is when the expression, I told you so, comes into play. You didn't tell us that the rains had stopped. Yeah, and there wouldn't be enough water. I promise you there is going to be enough water. Look, I talked to the beavers, and they've agreed to reroute the river so it'll flow right past here. You talked to the beavers? Yes, I spoke to them, and... <laughs> Let's be serious. This man is nothing more than a con artist, a horse thief, and a nut! Let's kill him! Let's kill him! I don't think they like you. You have to think of her feelings. I mean, I mean, she's home with the puppies all day. You're up. Hi, Johnny. Jenny, what are you doing here? You're gonna get in trouble. Visiting hours are over. I know, but I have to talk to you. Do you have a minute? <laughs> That's a really stupid question. Well, the thing is, is I saw my Uncle Jack today for what he really is. Disgusting, evil, manipulative, slimy dirtbag. You mean rotten to the core? Yes. 
And I think that the only way you can get out of this mess is just to kiss his boots, beg for his forgiveness, and admit that you were wrong and he was right. Uh-huh. Or you could help me escape. Johnny, one of the things that I always loved about you is that you marched to the beat of a different drummer. But please, just for this once, can't you play the game? I'm sorry. I, I don't even know the game. But if we can get away from Smithville, we can build our own life. Together. You know, we can get married and settle down and have a place of our own. Jenny, I'm a rambler man. I've, I've still got apples to plant, roads to travel, animals to talk to. But Johnny, I love you. Doesn't that mean anything? Look, I, I don't know much about love. But I, I do know that you shouldn't love a man like me. Fine. Bye, Jenny. The trial of Johnny Appleseed will now come to order. Hang him. Hang him. Hang him. Ah, oh, now, now, now. As long as I am judge, this man will receive a fair trial. Johnny Appleseed, you're accused of the despicable crime of horse stealing, as well as vagrancy, jaywalking, littering. Not to mention being the weirdest walnut we've seen in these parts in many a moon. How do you plead? Not guilty. All right. You're going to make this difficult? I'll call my first witness. Larry? What? Will you take the stand? You promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, not but truth, happy God? You do. Now, Larry. What? In your own words, state exactly what happened. He stole your horse. <laughs> he stole your horse. All right. <laughs> he stole your horse. Thank you, Larry, for that expert testimony. You may step down. Well, the court has heard all the evidence. I will now pronounce a verdict. Don't I get to speak? All right, all right, but make it snappy. We've got a hanging to do here. I, I, I just want to say, have you all gone crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about the pothead calling the kettle black. <laughs> you people know I didn't steal Larry's horse. I've never stole anything in my life. If I, I'm guilty of anything, it's of being different. I, I, I mean, I admit I'm not like everybody else. I'm an individual. And I, I, I refuse to answer to anybody but myself. But is that a crime? It is to Jack Smith, because he can't tolerate anything that he can't control. When, when, when you folks learned about farming and started to be self-sufficient, Jack Smith lost control over you. Yeah. And if I, in any way, am responsible for that, then at least I can die a proud man. Hey, people, 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 come on now. You're listening to a man who talks to beavers. Now let's wrap this up. I find you guilty. You'll hang by your neck till you're dead. Knock the stool out from under him. Let's see some twitch in here. Good shooting, Jenny. Look at that girl. Oh, oh. Jenny, you don't know how great it is to see you. Yeah. It'll give you the opportunity of saying goodbye. You say goodbye. I say hello. What's this doing here? I thought you might like to see some of your old friends. Places is that? The river. The 
creek bed's full. We're saved! Thanks, Johnny. Don't thank me. Thank the beavers. So, thanks to Bert the beaver and all his furry, flat-tailed friends, Johnny was able to save the settlement. And thanks to Jenny, Johnny was saved. Well, Johnny, I'm glad you decided to stay a little longer. I'm glad I got to live a little longer. <laughs> Are you hungry? Starving. What did you bring? Apples. <laughs> oh, happy you. Well, my dearest rambling man, I'll be sad to see you go. Well, I, I've been thinking about what you said, and maybe I should plant my roots and settle down. You know, we, we could get married and build a house and watch our trees grow. I could get involved in community affairs. Sounds wonderful, Johnny, but not for you. You've got itchy feet and I can't scratch them. But, but I, I just can't bear the thought of you sitting under the apple tree with anybody else but me. You've got a mission, Johnny. You can't let me or anybody else stop you. You're right, Jenny. But at least allow me to plant a special apple orchard in memory of us. And that way, you'll always remember me. I'll always remember you, Johnny. And this is that very same orchard that Johnny planted for Jenny. Who, by the way, just happens to be my great-great-grandmother, Granny Smith. As for her Uncle Jack, he was tarred and furred and forced to spend the rest of his days in an unventilated room with Larry. <laughs> anyway, thanks to Johnny and the beavers moving the river, the settlement grew and prospered. Mac McIntosh became famous for his breed of apple, not to mention Granny Smith's. And Smithville became known as the apple capital of the world. What do you mean, so what? Listen, you city slicker. If you can't understand that these here trees may be the last living memorial to the great Johnny Appleseed, then you got no business owning this land. And come to think of it, I got no business selling it. Now go on, get out of my orchard. You're stinking up the place. What? <laughs> no way you can walk back, Jack. You heard what Jimbo said. Get out of this orchard. And you better make it quick. Otherwise, I just might throw the biggest thunderstorm you ever saw. <laughs> 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 